William Wild Bill Guarnier, Band of Brothers, Unusual and Terrible End. William Guarnier was born William J. Great Guarnier in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on April 28, 1923. During the Great Depression, he enrolled in a civilian military training program. Guarnier, whose mother lied to the government about her son's age, claimed he was 17 when he was 15 years old. He was the youngest of 10 children born to Joseph and Augusta Guarnier, both of whom were Italian immigrants. After completing his training, he intended to join the United States Army as an officer. He spent three seasons at CMTC and completed his education in four years. However, due to the European War, the initiative was canceled after his third year. This angered his mother, who had yet to see one of her children graduate from high school. So Guarnier worked the night shift and went back to school, earning his diploma in 1942. Guarnier left South Philadelphia High School six months before graduation after the attack on Pearl Harbor to work for the Baldwin Locomotive Works, which made Sherman tanks. He was exempted from military service as a result of his efforts. He entered the Army on August 31, 1942, and began training at Camp Tacoa, Georgia. Guarnier gained the nickname Wild Bill because of his scorn for the enemy. He escaped his first fight on D-Day as part of the French Allied invasion. His older brother, Henry Guarnier, was killed fighting at an Italian campaign at Monte Cassino. Therefore, he had a profound dislike for the Germans. Guarnier married his fiancée, Frances Pecca, in 1947, after returning home from Europe, and they had two kids, Eugene and William Jr. Eugene would follow in his father's footsteps by serving in Vietnam for a short time. At the time of his death, he was a young man. Guarnier was the grandfather of nine grandkids and 14 great-grandchildren. Guarnier was assigned to Easy Company, 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division. Winters urged the men to wait for his order to fire before shooting, but Guarnier believed Winters would hesitate and fired a shot with his shotgun under Thompson, killing the majority of the soldiers. Guarnier also took part in a winter attack on a 105 millimeter set of howitzers, who had broken the law later that morning. As 13 paratroopers faced 50 German forces, Winters was named Guarnier as the team's second sergeant. On the morning of June 6th, Guarnier joined Lieutenant Richard Winters and a few men who were heading south to protect the town of saint louis marie du mont and exit number two. They learned of an impending German force and headed out to ambush it. Guarnier arrived at Moet Melon de Grand, just off the run, on December 10th, 1944, for a rest and rehabilitation period before being dispatched to the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium on December 16th. He was reinstated at the same post since papers relating to his legal struggle and retrenchment did not come from England. A major armed conflict attacked Easy Company and its position when it was holding the line just up the southwest flank of the hill. Guarnier lost his right leg while attempting to drag his friend Joe Toy to safety who also lost his right leg. Guarnier's participation in the war was severely harmed as a result of this. Guarnier was awarded three bronze star medals and two purple hearts after receiving Silverstein in battle during a CT-type break on D-Day, making him one of only two men of Easy Company, beyond the Band of Brothers' memoirs of the great Richard Winters, Lynn Compton, who was awarded the Silver Star during the war while a member of the Easy Company. Richard Winters referred to Guarnier as a natural killer in his life history. In March 1945, Guarnier returned to the United States and began a series of bizarre acts. He dislocated his right arm after inserting an artificial right leg into his arm till he was entirely paralyzed from the body. He became a member of several veteran organizations and presided over several Easy Company meetings. Following attacks were cited as an illustration of how a small group may attack a superpower that was on the defense. When Easy Company discovered a line on an island south of the Rhine River in mid-October 1944, Guarnier was injured. He needed to stroll down the aisle to check on and encourage his guys, 
who were dispersed around the room. He had stolen a motorcycle from a Dutch farmer in broad daylight while riding it. A sniper rifle shot him in the right leg. He was thrown from his motorcycle, his right tibia was broken, and debris was lodged in his right hip. On October 17, 1944, he was transported to England. Guarnier did not want to be sent to another unit while he was recovering from his injuries. So he smeared black shoe polish, sat down on the concrete in a pair of slacks, and walked out of the hospital in his excruciating discomfort. A military court imprisoned him, demoted him, and sent him back to the hospital. He informed them that he would be going AWOL once more to join the Easy Company. He was held in the hospital for a week before being returned to his room. Guarnier wrote to World War II paratroopers from the first set of brothers telling their narrative with his best buddy Edward, Babe Heffron, and Robin writing outlining a simple mission. Berkeley publishing group Penguin Books published the book in 2007. Guarnier also penned a brief piece of A Silver Eagle, the official history of Banda Children veteran Clancy Lyle, who was given the moniker when the book was published in March 2013 by the British publisher Springs Publishing. After returning home, Guarnier and Heffron stayed friends for life. Guarnier played a key role in the 1954 ammunition ceremony. He also became the godfather of Ron's daughter Patricia. Guarnier died of a ruptured aneurysm on March 4th, 2014 at Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. He was 90 years old at the time. His two sons, nine grandchildren, and 14 great-grandchildren survive him. The Pennsylvania Commonwealth honored Guarnier with a half-flag ordered by Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett to commemorate his military service. He is interred in the 1600 South Cemetery of Saints Peter and Paul. Springfield, Pennsylvania, Sproul Road Wild Bill's grandson established the Wild Bill Guarnier Memorial Fund following his death to carry on Bill's history of helping veterans. Sculptor Chad Fisher had a lot of fun with the bronze monument of Wild Bill Guarnier at the Delaware County Veterans Memorial.